The Cube at OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014 is brought to you by Brocade. Say goodbye to the status quo and hello to Brocade. And Red Hat. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Atlanta. This is SiliconANGLE TV's live wall-to-wall -wall coverage of OpenStack Summit Atlanta 2014. I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org. Joining us for this segment is Brian Gracely and Aaron Delp, the co-founders of the Cloudcast podcast. If you haven't heard it, this one's been around for about three years. Um, we at theCUBE always try to find the smartest people, extract the signal from the noise. These guys, I, I don't know if it's a signal from the noise, they just dig deep <laughs> with some of the best geeks in the industry. Um, you know, we, we tend to up-level a little bit more to the business conversation here. Um, it, it, this has to be really your guys' audience here. You know, the, the geeks, the developers, and everything else. Uh, let's start, you know, what have you thought of the show so far, and uh, Brian? Yeah. Uh, well, we were, we were talking about it last night. So, um, lots of people, which I guess is good. It feels like VM, like, like the small version of VMworld almost. A lot of familiar faces. Um, no customers here. I, I mean, other than the ones they put on stage, I was joking with him last night, because he was in the booth a little bit. I said, did you see any customers, anybody? And he says, yeah. I saw a few, which yeah. I was kind of shocked about. But, um, you know, there's this weird mix, and I think you guys hit on it in your wrap up yesterday. There's a weird mix of like really good energy and then, but where's the substance underneath it? And right. uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know yeah. where that Aaron, is. Aaron, you've been working the booth. What, what have yeah. you seen so far? And and like we were saying at lunch today, I am seeing a lot of customers actually, but it, it's really interesting of the level of depth of the customer here. It still is very introductory. Yeah. The huh. the level of you know deep customer asking a lot of really in depth questions. I, I'm not seeing a lot of that just yet, and, and a lot of just basically how do you get going kind of questions. Right? All right, let, let, let's, let's, let's up level it a little bit and then, then I'm sure we'll, we'll dig back down in. So, you know, think, you know, Amazon, you know, brought us the whole cloud world in 2006, uh, about, uh, gosh, what was it, in, in, in 2007 or eight, kind of the whole private and hybrid cloud discussion got started. About four years ago, OpenStack, you know, started making movement here. You know, what do you see as the state of cloud and, you know, how, how does OpenStack fit into that whole discussion? So we were actually joking. So we've been doing the podcast about three years now. And, and it started out really small of, hey, let's just call some people and see if they'll actually get on Skype with us and talk. And, and it kind of snowballed from there. But, but we were saying earlier, a lot of the conversations are still the same. The, the industry isn't moving as fast as everyone wants it to move. And technology really isn't the problem a lot of times. Uh, it, it's, it's all these outside factors um, that you can get into, but everyone's kind of gotten into them before, but the technology part's a lot of times the easiest part. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think we have a few benchmarks. I mean, we know roughly what, what Amazon does in terms of business, which uh, is, is good, but if you think, if you put it in the big picture of things, it's still basically a rounding error, at least in terms of the IT industry, what, $5 billion versus three or four trillion dollars. So it's, um, I don't know, I, I think the thing for, for us, we see, um, We've seen a lot of growth of people trying to figure out these transitions. So like, you know, in the past, we did a lot of stuff about conversion infrastructure. People kind of got that, but they, they wanted the latest. We've been doing a lot around DevOps, and at least for us, the, the uptake has been really high. Um, so a lot of people trying to figure out transitional shifts. Um, in, terms of, in terms of the technology, eh, it's, it, is, it is what it is. Um, I mean, if, if, you, if you really boil it down, like OpenStack can either be a replacement for VMware or a replacement for, for Amazon, however the heck you want to do it, the only thing interesting is the economics. Is anybody going to make any money? Is it going to save customers any money? Is it going to, is it going to drive any business? And I don't know that we know that yet. We know, it, we know what VMware does and we know what Amazon does, but I don't know that we know where OpenStack wants to live or what they want their goal to be. All right, so has OpenStack reached a level of maturity that it's you know a, a player out there to be able to build a platform on? I mean, there's no doubt Amazon's you know we've got a few billion dollars. They've got an ecosystem. They're doing their thing. You know, um, fr from my standpoint, I would put you know uh, Microsoft Azure and you know Google's you know uh, GAE GCE as a contender in that space. Uh, I don't know that I'd put OpenStack at that same level yet. Um, it, you know, even if you take all the service providers and everybody's going to do it, it, it's kind of a is it a second class cloud citizen? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so there's a difference in my mind between 
can you stand it up and get it going? And But what does it take to do that? <laughs> what is the overhead yeah. today? Um, I think it's, it's still pretty heavy overhead wise. Yeah. Um, is it as almost, I wouldn't say frictionless, but less friction than some of the public clouds that are out there? Probably not, right? No. We're still working on that. I, 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 yeah, I would, I would agree with you. I, I think, I mean, it, you know, it's blasphemous to sort of say maybe it isn't a first class citizen here at this event, um, but I, I, I kind of think- I, Lightning's I, coming down. Yeah, I know, I know. No, I think it, I think it is. I think you have to be realistic and say, look, um, the, the, the hardest thing about OpenStack is if, if I were a user, if I'm a customer or something like that, A, which one do I pick? because there is no one open stack. It's, it's, you know, we're, we're, I mean, this is the equivalent of like fiber channel where everybody had 10 different variants. This isn't ethernet. They want it to be Linux. It's like Linux. It's like Linux, it's like fiber channel. Um, and, and people other than this crowd doesn't know it. And we were joking yesterday, we were talking to somebody, we said, look, uh, the idea that the only way you're going to learn open stack is to go read the code is a dead end story. Uh, if I can't get decent documentation, I can't get an interface I know how to use and DevOps, blah, 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 you won't grow it. It'll, it'll be a, it's ham ra it'll be ham radio compared to Amazon or VMware or something like that. Right. I mean, one one of the big things I've seen at the show is who's going to help make this simple to consume. So right. there's some of the orchestration players that are trying to sit on top and, and, and do that. And you know, Aaron, yep. you just joined Solid Fire recently. Yep. Uh, I, I loved your tweet this morning. You know, most companies don't have time or money uh, to really build that you know army of OpenStack ninjas. Exactly. So um, yep. you know, I, I've talked with you guys many times as you know the enterprise guys. You know, they're not mostly DevOps guys, they're not mostly coders. How many do we need, and how much are there going to be solutions that the enterprise can adopt that don't require that change? Yeah. Exactly. It goes, it goes back to your point at the beginning, Aaron, about you know it's the, the, the tech, but then it's the, the ripple and what it means to everybody that's yeah. got to deploy exactly. it. Exactly, for, yeah. for me the number one thing is, yeah, I mean, consumability, right? How do you make this easily consumable? Well, and and, and you guys, I mean, you guys did smart stuff. I mean, we, you know, we've we've got some guys that we work with that do direct DevOps on our show, mm -hmm. and the number one ask they have is not give us more DevOps. It's like, is there a vendor out there who will who will give me a, a full rack of equipment that has a base load of OpenStack installed on it? Like what mm -hmm. you guys announced today, I think was very very smart. Mm -hmm. You know, Dell announced something similar. We've seen it, you know, from an EMC perspective with things like vBlock and VCE. Like, people tend to downplay just stuff that will move the ball, just simple steps. Like, yeah. is it easier to get the gear? Is it easier to have it up and running? Uh, you know, and we've argued a bunch of times, the only guys making money in this space at this point are folks like Marantis who are helping people. They're right. not, they're not pontificating, they're yeah. helping. Right. You know, whether you like that or not, helping people pay for help. They pay yeah. for so problem solving. The, that underlying infrastructure, to quote Jeremiah Dooley, that underlying infrastructure is boring, but it's complicated. It, it, it's complicated. It's it's complicated plumbing, <laughs> right? How do you how do you take that plumbing and make it consumable, easy plumbing to where plumbing is plumbing? Yeah. And, <laughs> and and the reality of OpenStack is you can spend as many hours as you want getting OpenStack running. You still haven't made one application even begin to start working. And mm -hmm. again, that that's the goal of this thing, right? The goal is to get that running. So, you know, like I would almost argue if you were if you were on the federation, or you were the foundation for OpenStack, your, your goal should be, we should be the most invisible, easy to install plumbing on the internet, and I don't think they're there yet. So, but I don't know that they think that's their goal. They, they think it's something sure. else. All right, so, uh, Brian, you brought up, you know, let, let, let's talk about some of the money in, yeah. in, in cloud, you know, look at what is the funding and the motivation. Um, you know, one of the challenges I see is if you look at the big companies that are here, uh, you know, any of the guys that sell traditional infrastructure with, you know, billions of dollars in their existing business, you know, not sure how much it's in their best interest to move this along really fast, because if I move to OpenStack, shouldn't I have some kind of portability between what I'm doing? I mean, uh, you know, if it's one cinder versus another, um, you know, a company like Moran I mean, they, they seem to have good brand name recognition at the show, but from, from what I've heard, they were sub $50 million last year. So compared to what the big companies are doing, you know, that, 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 that's pennies. You know, when you've got billions of dollars of existing stuff on the line. So yeah, please take on I that. I don't think we've seen, and you, you sort of talked about it yesterday in your wrap up, like if this doesn't take off in a year or two, it'll implode. I actually think the faster that implosion happens, the better. I think you can't, think about it this way. So forget about how many, vendors there are with, with, with distributions. If you're Solid Fire or EMC or, or anybody who has to work with one of those distributions, even if you're Red Hat, just the pure cost, or if you're a customer, the pure cost of trying to go, I'm going to certify one of these things that comes out every six months, but it comes out in pieces, is ridiculously expensive. The faster we can get to even one or two distributions, and I don't really care who it is, um, 
get get to a couple of distributions so it's somewhat consistent. It becomes more like Ethernet, and and then you know, and then I think what you have is you'll have some takeoff, like you do when you see a large company buy a startup, and you go, I can put a sales force behind it, I can put resources behind it. I don't think any of the guys here, other than maybe Rackspace or Red Hat, you know, maybe HP now, have enough resources to make it successful. You're never going to see Scout cloud scaling or Piston or any of the great technologists. Not enough money to go drive enough you know, engagements with customers to, to make a number that's going to show up on your radar, I don't think. Um, yeah. um, one of the interesting things you look at is that there's the companies here that are building clouds, yep. and then there's companies that are helping company, helping the users build stuff on the private side. And OpenStack, I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Is because it a it, provider, it, it, is it an arms dealer? Is it? <laughs> right, right. Yep. And, and, and even, you know, you talk about, you know, is it even an operating system? I don't think it's fair to call it a Linux operating system because, no. you know, Linux always started with a little bit, you know, more of a complete operating system, you could say. Instead of doing, you know, Unix, I, I can do Linux. Um, I can't, I, I still need bits and pieces to put together. Right. Um, I, I think I've heard it, you know, it might be part of the kernel, um, but to get right. to that full distribution, it, it, I've got to have more. Yeah, it's, so it's interesting of what are the use cases that will ultimately drive what OpenStack will be. And I still think we're all over the map there. And yeah. I think, unfortunately, I don't know when that clarification will come or how it will come, because to Brian's point earlier, there's there's a lot of players here, there's a lot of opportunity here. How does that settle out over time? Is it just whoever has the deepest pockets pockets wins <laughs> long term, where you just kind of starve everyone else out of the market? I don't know that answer, but the use cases and the customers have to come and say, I want that, right? Until somebody says, I want that, and some money starts going around that use case, it's going to be hard to determine a winner. Yeah, you get, you get two challenges, and, and you know this from your analyst days. Like the worst thing you can be as a product, whether you're a startup or something, is to not fit into a bucket, right? It's, it's great to go, ah, we're different, we don't. But if nobody can classify what you do, th that's hard. Yeah. And then, and so yeah, are you a kernel? Are you the new Linux? Are you the new cloud? Whatever you are. And the other thing is, like you said, if you're Rackspace, you have totally different motivations than if you're Piston Cloud. Right, I mean, totally different. If you're Rackspace, you love the community because in essence, you're trying to catch up to Amazon and you want free resources, you want the cheapest resources you can get. If you're Piston Cloud or Cloud Scaling or any of those kind of guys, like you want to build a business that customers will pay you on a recurring basis, I mean, totally different. And, and how you resolve that or you don't get people creating forks and variations, I don't know how that resolves itself. Yeah. Other, other, than, other than they just have to collapse and some of those groups end up going to work for it. Now, the good news is I think there's a ton of sort of consolidated talent at certain companies that somebody's going to end up buying them up and having a fantastic you know, head start on something. Yeah, yeah, no, you're right. I mean, Brian, you know, uh, Dave Vellante has often said, you know, if there's, you know, one lawyer in a town, he's going to go broke. If there's two, they're going to be rich. Right. Um, <laughs> what we have right now is, of course, the that. paradox of choice, yeah. uh, where, you know, there's dozens of uh, environments and customers are just going to freeze up yep. um, because, you know, if I, I have just vanilla chocolate and strawberry, no problem, but you go to the, you know, case in the dairy and it's like, oh my God, there's no way I'm going to please everybody or get, yeah. get the right, yeah. how do I, hey, there, there's that fear that I'm going to make that wrong choice and, and who's going to stand with me. Yep. Um. <laughs> so I'll, I'll flip a question back at you then. So, so OpenStack <laughs> long term, have we reached a point though where we have momentum, you have a lot of players, you have a lot of money, too big to fail at this point? Yeah, so, so um, you know, <laughs> definitely we, we've talked a lot about momentum lately and there's so many players that are involved. Um, you, know, you know, Brian, you brought up acquisitions. You know, are we poised, you know, could somebody come and say, you know, hey, Mirantis, they've got some great developers, they've got some good momentum, but you know, if we put them into a, you know, <laughs> company that's got 10, 20, 50 billion dollars and thousands of people in the field, you know, what could we do with them? And they right. might even squash the distribution, but they could have those coders, they have those leaders, and they can do something. So I, I guess, Aaron, to, to your point, um, you know, I mean, we're 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 all here, yeah. um, and right. you know, it, you know, it's only my first time coming to the OpenStack Summit, but many people are here. There, there's a lot invested. Um, um, something drastic would have to be happen for you know the, the rug to be pulled up and you know us not to be coming to OpenStack Summit in yeah, two I, years. I agree. I, I think you know what what Cisco is going to do, what VMware is going to do. We we sort of know what HP is going to do, Oracle. Get, but th there's a few guys out there with a lot of money that either have uh, uh, portfolios to protect, markets to protect, or quite honestly, they're trying to figure out if they want to go play in the new game 
and, and fight Amazon or fight Google or somebody like that. So um, yeah, I think we'll be here. I think we'll be coming back to these things. How big they'll be, I don't know, but I suspect, I suspect the show will be 30 or 40% larger and we'll have half the number of distributions last next year. I, and, I more, and more billion dollar commitments. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. The billion dollars is like the anti up it's in the this new, game. Yeah, now. it's the new in. Come on, yeah. IBM set the bar with a billion dollars back in the 90s. Shouldn't be at, be at $10 billion now? Sure. I mean, you yeah. know, we, we you need know, that. Inflation adjusted. That's, it, what, it be, I mean, that, that, that's what Simon, I mean, we've had Simon Wardley, who we kind of buy into from an economics. He says, look, it's a billion dollars a quarter is the game. I mean, if you're going to try and compete, if you think you're going to compete with Amazon or Google, it's a, it's a billion dollars a quarter, yeah. not, you know, Cisco's billion dollars over two years or IBM's billion dollars here, but it's, it's a bigger game. Um, and the, the, the thing I don't think a lot of the vendors understand is when you're an Amazon or a Google or a Microsoft, whoever are running their own cloud, your, your learning curve is going like this. It's growing hockey stick wise and people that are selling individually to each individual customer, it's a lot of relearning, a lot of retraining. You know, the, 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 you're playing at different speeds. You're playing you know, elementary school against the pros. Yeah, so, so I, I finally found from Cisco that, uh, from, talked to Lou Tucker, and the intercloud solution is service providers and Cisco will have their own cloud. Um, if you look at uh, the, the EMC Federation with EMC and VMware have vCloud hybrid service, HP's got their cloud, IBM's got their cloud. You know, how many clouds do you guys think we have in a few years? Yeah, Un unfortunately, that's going to be the next area of consolidation. Once we consolidate this OpenStack market down, then we got to consolidate the public, all the public clouds down because that seems to be, yeah, there's a big land grab there and I want to go fight against AWS, I want to go fight against Azure, I want to go fight against GCE, but yeah, I mean, unfortunately, uh, like you were saying earlier, like it's what's the in for this game? What's the ante? Well, if it's a billion dollars a quarter, I would also say too, yeah, almost everyone has to have a public cloud and then in, three to five years, we're going to have less public clouds. <laughs> That's the next cycle to yeah. consolidate. Now, I, I, I think we'll see a healthy number of clouds. I don't think you'll see like three or four, just for geography reasons and other stuff like that. But um, yeah, it's, it's going to be a big boys game. I mean, it's, it's like if you want to be in the database space to compete with Oracle, you better come with a lot of guns and money. Same thing with cloud. Mm -hmm. um, how many? I don't know. And the other thing is we don't know, the other thing we haven't seen yet is you know, everybody was like, you know, uh, certain things would happen, and then five years later, I mean, Facebook came out of nowhere, some other guys came out of nowhere. Um, nobody stepped up yet, nothing out of the ordinary has affected AWS yet. They've been doing, they've been growing for about four or five years. Th th there's the possibility that something comes along and happens, mm -hmm. that whether it's people marginalize it through, you know, PaaS plays, if that ever takes off, or the Snowden thing takes off, or whatever it might be. We haven't seen anything yet that hasn't just stopped growth, and nobody grows 50% year over year infinitely. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, so, we were saying earlier that you know you guys have been having a discussion for three years, and in many ways the, the conversation hasn't changed too much. So, so Brian, I, I, I know you're, you're you're a fan of the Heath brothers, yep. uh, and what they wrote is the, the the path, the elephant, and the rider. You know, what's holding us back? What do we need to do to actually make progress, or is it just the fact that you know? IT takes you know, a decade for anything major to happen. Um, I think that's part of it. I think IT changes slower than we think it does. Um, I, think, I think we're at a stage where the, the skills that are needed are different. Right? Either the economics, or the, you know, between open source and cloud, the skills and everything's different. I think IT people are notoriously conservative um, and they're not in a rush to change for change sake. Um, I think we've seen a bunch of little incremental stuff. I mean, converged infrastructure was, is, is bigger than it was. Um, you know, people actually using cloud platforms is, is bigger than it was. Um, I, some of it's just slow. It's just, like I hate to say that it moves slow, but uh, you know, our industry, you know, five years is, five years is the, the old new 10 years, but it's not, it hasn't become two years right. yet. And, and, and the other thing too, probably the number one, so you know, we do the podcast and then usually we stop recording and then we sit around and chat for a little bit. The number one issue, no matter what kind of company is, no matter what they're in, what's the biggest problem? Talent. It, yeah. it is DevOps talent, it is cloud talent, it is, you know, in order to get that experienced person, you got to go develop the battle scars to be able to hire that person with the battle scars kind of thing, and it's just not happening fast enough in our industry. And I think it's a combination of everything is going faster, but at the same time, to go to Brian's point, a lot of the IT staff don't want to necessarily branch out and take that risk and go get those new battle scars. They want to stay in their old battle scars and, and keep yeah, making we, money we, off we, the old we, battle we, scars. We, we, 
we joke about it, but I mean, we're, we're kind of in the unicorn business. You can't go to a show where people don't go, you need to know this, this, this. And I mean, DevOps by itself is the, this premise that you know application development, which is a 20 year learning curve, and ops, which is a 10 year learning curve. And yeah. I don't know, I mean, it, I, well, we'll put it this way. Like, I think we would only now, as, as podcasters, think that we're you know, marginally above terrible, and it's yeah. taken us three years, and, right. and we don't practice it very much. So right. exactly. stuff, stuff takes a long time to learn. Um, and again, this is the, you know, the thing we always end up telling companies is like, if you're going to compete against the guys who have this fast learning curve, if people are the problem, you, you better figure out how to, how to deal with that differently. And if you're, if you're just selling boxes or you're selling ELAs, like that learning curve will be the death of a lot of these companies, uh, or variety with the death of a yeah. lot of these companies. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, one of my, f my favorite quotes yesterday, uh, at, so far at the show, uh, Evan Powell, uh, who was uh, one of the founders of Nexenta, and now he's uh, got a Swift stack, he said, uh, you know, we're, we're trying to make our people be dancing unicorns. It's one thing for you to be an IT generalist and learn everything, and now we want you to code too. Right. So it's like, you know, yeah, you can dance hard. for us, monkey. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about careers in the clouds. I mean, you know, we've known each other for a bunch of years, we've all changed jobs, at least once uh, since we've known each other. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, Aaron, you got, I think we're all hiring, right? Yep. So, uh, exactly. uh, you know, what, what, what are you seeing out there, um, you know, and, and, and uh, well, give some commentary on so, that. So, uh, to kind of elaborate on that point a little more from earlier of, a lot of people want to hire the people that have all this experience in the industry, but at the same time, the discipline hasn't been around long enough to get that, you know, and there's not a, not a lot of people really branching out and doing it new. Everyone wants it, I want the yeah, super I want 15 years season. of cloud right. experience, right? And then That's right. the product, so it's a combination of the, the people don't quite have enough experience and aren't willing to branch out. And then the products themselves aren't necessarily consumable enough yet. So you have this weird match of, I really need somebody super experienced to install this because the product isn't necessarily consumable yet. Or they so just you, live in the wrong place. Right. I mean, uh, you know, if, if you're going to go work for Amazon and you don't live in Seattle, you know, the number of jobs get smaller or you want to work for whoever, that didn't, that wasn't the case, I mean, that's not the case when you have the normal sort of ecosystem. Um, no, I, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's a fantastic time if you have any skills that are 10 minutes farther ahead than anybody else, like you can make a lot, a lot of money. Uh, you might travel a lot. Uh, you might get asked to be an expert at a lot of these things and people will call you out. Um, but it's, it's a crazy, I mean, we have more conversations with people going like, I don't know what to do with my, with my career that five years ago they felt like they knew they were just going to kind of progress. And right. so, you know, you can look at it like our, our buddy Ulander always goes, like you can look at uh, it as a, just a massive failure, like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Or it's opportunity. And the opportunity's hard, but I mean, there's a million jobs out there and there's a million that as long as you're willing to sort of you know, learn it faster than anybody else, you can be really successful. Yeah, uh, so, so it's OpenStack or DevOps or whatever. So, so if, I, if I'm interested in tech, you're saying I don't have to move to the Valley, you know, you guys live down in North Carolina, yep. I'm in Massachusetts, it, it's sometimes hard. There are limited options yep. if you yep. want to, you know, stay in yes. those environments. And, so. and yeah, especially in the OpenStack community, in the DevOps community, yeah. I mean, you, you really can, if you develop the right skills, it is not a requirement to live in the Valley anymore. No, I mean, it's, you know, the, the company's in the valley, but the, the customers and the needs are all over the place, so be willing to go where the customers are. Um, all right, so uh, we're, we're running low on time. Last thing I want to focus, you've been doing this for th for three years. You, you, <laughs> yeah, you're still right. having fun with it, and is, is there any money to be made in new media? Enough so, to take our wives out to dinner. Yeah, occasionally. We got, well, <laughs> I, I, just, you know, I just realized for the first time, we're, we're now like Siskel and Ebert, because in the past we always kind of had no competitiveness, at least in our regular jobs. Now we sort of do, right. but um, now, I, I don't, I mean, you can make, trust me, you can make money if you want to. Our problem is always, we enjoy our regular jobs more in terms of paying our bills, so you, you have conflicts of interest, but if you're willing to get out of having, having conflict, there's a lot of money, there's a lot of companies that want to use you as an influencing source, and people will have 10,000 followers or 50,000 blog posts a month. Um, I don't know, we do it for fun. I mean, you, you guys do it for, for a living, you do an awesome job. You know, we had we had claimed a couple years ago that we were going to overtake the cube uh, as an open thing. Eh. We, we like doing our little niche thing. We'll, yeah. we'll be like the open stack of podcasts. Yeah, Stu can be AWS. <laughs> They're going to be the new big media. Exactly. Aaron. Exactly. No, uh, it's it's exactly that. The biggest thing for us is is three years in. Yeah, it still has to be fun. You still have to want to take time out on nights and weekends away from family and. We meet awesome people, that's the best yeah, part about I, it. I've, far and away the biggest thing is, yeah, you could say, yep, get to meet these people, and yeah, uh, you know, 
CEO of a company is willing to give you an hour of their time, it's, it's very valuable and very, very insightful. Um, and that's been probably our biggest learning tool over the last couple of years. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, hey, I always love, you know, we have all these conversations over lunch in the hallways, at the evening parties and everything. Appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedules to, uh, you know, share with our community. Uh, and recommend everybody check it. Thecloudcast.net is, is the site. Uh, put out, uh, you know, typically every week or yes. yep. uh, on that. Been doing it over three years, lots of stuff. They, they even had me on once. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, w w was honored to be on. Uh, always great seeing you guys. And this is uh, the Cube's continuous coverage uh, from OpenStack Atlanta 2014. We'll be right back with our next guest after this quick break.